A Thousand Year Old Fox, released in 1969, is a brilliant horror title and one of my favourite South Korean films of all time. In A Thousand Year Old Fox, a woman is attacked by bandits on the road. They kill her baby and chase her into a river where she presumably drowns. Strangely, she is found on the lake bed by her husband. Her husband has been unable to meet her, had been unable to meet her, excuse me, distracted by the queen who holds great jealous affection for him and so his wife suffered the fate she had. Though she seemingly has survived, there is more to this than mere good fortune. Dismissing the plausibly superstitious warnings of a priest, imagine this man's surprise when it turns out his wife has become the reincarnation of an apparently demonic entity. It allows its host to seek revenge on those who caused her demise, first the bandits, then later the queen herself, in exchange for a chance that both of them may live again. A brilliant horror film, superbly executed in terms of technical precision, the way the possessed woman flies about is beautifully coherent and fluid with the film's surrounding edits. This is achieved through fixed photographic tracking and effectively, an effective framing as well as graceful edits, which can serve to both enchant to illustrate the demon's gravity-defying agility or to disorient to demonstrate the confused frantic terror of those she attacks. The way this film builds mood is also just masterly. It is told within a traditional theatrical framework, not poised as a genre film until these elements emerge. The occult crawls into this initially dramatic narrative, haunting its universe and transforming the production into a supernatural horror film. Fundamentally, it is a romantic tragedy, the shattered marriage acting as gravity for all of this film's otherworldly elements, as well as its human dramatics. Great care was taken by its director to emphasise this narrative's power with a series of memorable scenes. Every sequence of this film is narratively tense and will contain something creatively inventive to impress us doubly so. So let's discuss then this film's director, Shin Sang-ok. Sang-ok was a South Korean cinema legend with over 70 director credits to his name. His most well-regarded works were released during the 1950s and 1960s, a time wherein he was dubbed the Prince of South Korean Cinema. Unfortunately, outside of Korea, he's probably most well known for being a kidnapping victim. Who would have the audacity to kidnap an acclaimed film director, you might ask? Kim Jong-il, of course. Yes, the North Korean dictator Kim Jong-il. Shin sang was kidnapped, along with his wife, by the North Korean government in order to assist in boosting the comparatively lacking North Korean film industry. In 1978, Shin's former wife, Cho Yun-hee, an actress who starred in several of his films, was kidnapped in Hong Kong and taken to North Korea. Shin, of course, travelled to Hong Kong to investigate and was kidnapped as well. The North Korean authorities denied the kidnapping accusations, claiming that Shin came to the country of his own accord, although Shin and Choi have released secret audio recordings of conversations they had with Kim Jong-il, which confirm their story. Apparently it wasn't until 1983 that Shin Sang-ok actually met with Kim Jong-il and learned why he had been abducted. They had been attempting to um, re-educate him during the intervening years. Horrifying. His ex-wife was brought to the same meeting. This is where she first learned of Shin's presence in North Korea. At their dictatorial captor's suggestion, the two remarried. Shin directed seven films with Kim Jong-il acting as their executive producer. The most well-known of these pictures is 1985's Pulgasari, an attempt at a something reminiscent of the Japanese kaiju film, which I would love to discuss in the very near future, because it is actually, well, pretty swell. In 1986, Shin and his wife escaped while they were in Vienna for a film festival. They managed to obtain political asylum from the United States Embassy there in Vienna, and so Shin and his wife lived in America initially under the protection of government authorities. They eventually set up home in Los Angeles, where Shin sang worked on a small number of lesser-budgeted Hollywood productions. I mean, Three Ninjas, Knuckle Up isn't exactly highbrow, right? Shin must have felt so. He returned to South Korea in 1994, residing there permanently until his passing in 2006. That same year, the South Korean president, Roy Mu Hyun, awarded Shin sang the Gold Crown Cultural Medal, the nation's highest honour for any artist. I highly recommend A Thousand Year Old Fox, a tremendous film. Do check it out.